Hey everyone, this is the Creative Leadership Podcast. My name is Arne van Oostrom. Thank you for joining me on this journey. So, uh, what's happening? My, you know, school started. Schools. The uh, so I have two kids, uh, eight years old and fourteen uh, years old. Uh, my uh, son is eight. My daughter, fourteen. Uh, I've never had a, a teenage daughter before. Uh, sounds maybe silly, but it's it's true. Uh, and uh, I don't know. You know, with social media and uh, that phone, that that phone in front of her face all the time. I don't know. I don't know. What, what, we, we, what will that do to a young person's brain? And uh, I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe I'm worried about the fact that, that maybe more that because she's a girl and, and, and all the images that she sees, everything has to be perfect. And, uh, you know, I don't know. I'm worried about that. So, again, I, you know, I, I, I you know, it's just my first uh, experiment with having a teenage daughter. Um, I am probably going to mess it all up. I don't know. I'm really trying to be a good dad. I'm really trying to. Um, but it, it, there's a generational thing, right? When I was a kid, when I was a teenager, you know, my parents were worried about stuff. I, I was, you know, we had this Commodore uh, computer and I was playing these games and, 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 and you know, and, and I was, I, I think I spent a lot of time playing these computer games. I had my favorite music. My, my, my dad really hated that. I watched television programs. I just didn't understand uh, I remember watching Monty Python and my dad just, you know, he was like, what is going on? What? Is, stop watching this, please. So, I mean, I think it's part of being a parent, not understanding your teenage kids. Um, and it's part of, you know, my struggles of, of letting go and and and, uh, and feeling that, that, that I kind of have to let go and have her make her own decisions. It's really tough. I think it's really tough. Anyway, back to school. So they're not home. Um, during this pandemic, everything kind of changed, I guess. But uh, here in the Netherlands, kids are going back to school. So uh, that's kind of normal, I think. Um, all right. Anyway, so on the show today, I have Robert Buchala. He's the managing director of consulting and he's a brand expert from uh, Ars Medium in Nuremberg, um, Germany. And uh, he grew up in Poland during the Soviet era, which is a really great story because he moved, as a teenager, he moved to Germany and he was totally overwhelmed by all the products and all the advertisement that he saw, which, which has been a big influence on him. On him. Um, and still is. Uh, he fell in love with brands and, and specifically purpose-driven companies. And we're going to talk a little bit about what makes a brand a great brand. So um, we're also going to talk about uh, his philosophy on uh, economics, about uh, taking care of resources and not managing resources. And he's going to sing the Kellogg's Frosties song to us uh, in German. He's also going to share going through a massive burnout and what it does to you, how it starts and um, how to recover. Um, I'm, we're really, really grateful for Robert uh, sharing that story because I think that's, uh, that's a valuable, really valuable lesson, I think, to uh, many of us, including myself. So enjoy. There we go. I'm a chaotic guy <laughs> and i love chaos uh, i really can 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 work quite far with chaos um which is always i'm always on drive i'm always taking a look on what will happen is next what do we take care of and that on every level and actually i think what describes me best is that i love change and i want to change whatever has to be changed that's the most characteristic thing about me. If you ask people who are dealing with me, they're always just like, okay, but Robert, we are ready. And I just like, no, we're not. Let's take the next step, you know? And that is, co-working with people is, is people who can deal with that perfect, but there are a lot of people who are just like, 
yeah, but stop now, you know? And I just like, no, let's take the next step. Let's take a look on what, 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 um, well, what impact does this have on what will ever develop and so on. So I am, well, you might say, um, I will never stop. <laughs> Is that something that you, the people around you uh, find frustrating every now and then? Or uh, it sounds like, like, please, can you stop? <laughs> yes, yeah, we're done. Yeah, yeah, we're done, Robert. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> partly, partly, yes. Especially if you're dealing with different people. Like, take a look on our company where we are working. Also, my um, uh, within my private situation and so on and so on. Always like pushing forward. And it compare. Uh, it, it depends on people who are dealing with me. So there are a lot of people who have this open-minded mindset. Let's say it like that. Where they say, yeah, that's cool. He's pushing me forward, and you're always, always challenging. But there are also people who are just like, you know, but we've taken the step and maybe can we just come down and just see what will happen within the next time and just a little bit, well, slower. But um, at the end of the day, it's all about that is what I believe. It's all about taking change and something that always existed and will, will, will ever exist. Uh, and it's something that is natural and something that you have to deal with and go to the next step and also see what you can do out of that. Mm -hmm. And have you always been like that? Do you, can you remember, mm -hmm. or did that start at one point? Or where, where did you, did, because, because the way you describe yourself, like, um, is that, so is that, you know, something that was clear to you, uh, you know, when you were a kid or like, was you were you were always pushing people <laughs> yeah, yeah kind of yes but not in an obvious way so yeah, I, I was really aware of that i was always like changing uh, a lot of changing situations within my life so i grew up in in poland uh just with my with my mom my dad was uh, abroad working there so we always changed where we lived and uh, then at as i've been 13 so within the time where you know, very important time for me. We moved from Poland to Germany, from a big industrial city into a very, very rural area in Germany, a really rural area, in the middle of the Alps. So there was always kind of change for me. And I was always this nice guy who is kind of, I could always deal with my teachers, for example, right? I was always the, the, the guy who was doing quite a lot of, well, troubles, but always had a good tone with them. And I always... You know, and at some point, and I think this started after I I had a burnout, like 2009, uh, where I just just stepped back one step and taking a look on, okay, what happened so far? Uh, what happened that it leads to, to, to this point? And what can I learn out of that? And at some point, I just recognized, okay, I have to be aware of, what my characteristic is that I always pushing forward, right? And then I start to kind of work and dealing with that. And it took me a long time to really understand what it means. And uh, why did your parents move to Germany from Poland? Well, actually, it was the the, the my, my my dad was always like, um, you know, I want to to offer you, my brother and me. Um, something totally different that we have in Poland. I want to get out of this regime. I want to give you all the possibilities to be successful in the future. This, and this is at the time that Poland was still part of sort of the uh, Eastern Bloc. Or, or, yeah, or, yeah for, for one month. You know, that was the funny thing that we moved in 1989. Um, oh really? Yeah. <laughs> so in August of 1989, we moved to Germany, and like two or three months later, you know, uh, you know what happened at this time. Yeah. So that was like, oh, damn it. <laughs> yeah. So no, but but still believe um, at the end of the day that it was for me it was a very good move. So really, do you think they would have? Do you think they would not have moved if they would have no? Because they didn't know this was going to happen. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 of course, I mean, I'm thinking like, what, where, where would I have developed or what would happen with me if we stayed, stayed in Poland? I don't think that we would have, or I would have, have those possibilities that I had. Yeah. And I would develop probably totally different because mm -hmm. it's not the same. I mean, just the, the, the East block, let's call it like that, just broke down. 
and there were like kind of chaos within this country, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So for many years, it's still chaos. If I take a look on Poland, what is happening there? Yeah, yeah. But but um, you know, it was it was. I, I believe that was very good for me talking mm -hmm. about where where I'm standing right now. But I didn't realize what happened to my personality and my character. So I was just like really just like. Um, from one day to another, I left all my friends, all my well, exactly. well, well existing area and moved to a totally different country. Right. Because you were 13? Yes. Yeah. And because that means that, a, you know, a big part of your childhood was in Poland. So, Definitely. right. So how, if you think back uh, at growing up in Poland, how was that? What, what, what are the things you remember? Well, what, what, what I recognize is there was a huge helping neighborhood community. That's, that was amazing, really. People helping each other, taking care of each other. Really, what, what I recognized, that was different here in Germany. So everybody was very, well, individual, taking care first of his or herself and the, and the, and the nearest area. So that was totally different in Poland. And we didn't have actually all those products and brands and so on, right? So what we did, it was just like a exchanging services area, right? So one guy could repair your car and another guy was the butcher. So they just exchanged things um, just to, to, to solve the problems, right? So um, I was really, really kind of overwhelmed, but also totally, totally crazy as I first went into a, into a store here in Germany, where I just said, what is happening here? You know, so many products, so many possibilities. And I was just like mad packing everything into uh -huh. this, this cart and my parents behind me taking back everything out because I was just like totally crazy, you know? <laughs> and that is something that I had to really to deal with uh, for, for one or two years. So really taking um, or being aware of, at first, of course, how different culture it is or how people deal with each other so it was a big change for me i also had to learn the language uh mm. because i didn't speak any any german word before that and also really to recognize whoa what about the the, the whole masses of products and possibilities that you have here mm. right so at the first point you're just like whoa wh what what the hell is happening here you know yeah that mm. was quite interesting and that was a big change i think in my in, in my life uh which I've mastered so far together with my parents. And that is why I think where, where the first point was to deal with changes and with different situations. And right? I'm, I'm kind of curious to, 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 to know, so because it must have been difficult for your parents to move from at that time, yeah. uh, you know, to move from Poland to Germany. So how did they, what did your parents do? What, what was their, how did they manage that? And is that, was it part of the, I mean, was it because you're, father or mother had a specific job or yes so my, my, my father started to leading a hotel in the in the yeah. in the in the area of schloss neuenschwanstein um there so they were also working the whole time of uh, my my brother and i've been also integrated and so so we helped a lot in there uh you know working there but we get money also for that i mean so you know oh, so really? cool. so that was that was really that, that was a cool time for us but i think for my parents that was really really hard right um but they had this vision in mind yes we want to offer and to provide something of the best possibility to develop for our for our children right and so they they had a hotel or they yes. were working it was their own their own hotel well, they they were leading that that the total. So they were kind of you know um, uh, they didn't own that because no one owns a hotel within that. But they were they were leading that for I think ten or twelve years, um, and uh, that is well the part with most time until I got um, uh, moved away from 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 my parents. I was walking there into helped as far as possible. Also cleaning toilets or whatever, whatever was needed, you know, I was just like, okay, let's do it. I mean, they need my help and we have to manage that somehow together. Let's do it. Right. And, but this was in Germany. Yes. And, but when they were in Poland, were they also working in a hotel? It was that, so, no. so that's. So my, 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 my dad was working in Hungary. So that is where the connections to, to, to Hungary is. And he was, he was well, um, he had a team of 
uh, people who were building um, streets and aqueducts and and something like that. So he he's been like for many years he's been like three months away, then being at home for a weekend, then again three months away, then a few days at home. So I didn't really I didn't have much time with my dad at this point. So mm -hmm. the first time it was as we moved here in Germany uh, oh, to really? Germany. Yeah. And, and your mother, your mother, what, what was she doing? Well, she was working in a, at a, as a, as a, uh, at a bay, bay, bay road, just like um, doing administrative things, mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah, but they uh, were both he, always both working. Yes, 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 mm -hmm. yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So that, as I mentioned, in, in Poland at this time, there was a huge, a really huge social system that really was taking care of the kids, mm -hmm. right? So we are all driving away into, into, into the for holidays like for four or five weeks within groups where they were taking care of the kids and so on without parents so they had the time to well to do to go to work so didn't they didn't have to take any holidays or something like that and they are always people and also institutions taking care of other people right so right. then all of a sudden your parents said to each other we're going to start a hotel in Germany. Yeah. <laughs> that seems like a huge thing. It was. I mean, where do you start doing that? Well, actually, but that, that, that is something that I, I suppose I have that from my father, like from my dad. It's just like, okay, let's do it. I mean, that's always drive me just like, oh, there's a huge product. There's something to do. Just like, okay, let's see. I mean. <laughs> but just the paperwork. I mean, yeah. <laughs> in my mind, like. How do you, because you're in Poland, yeah. at the time there's still this regime, Yeah, you want to go to Germany, start a hotel, that seems like an impossible task. Yeah, but he had to help from people from here. So he, mm. he had definitely just two or three friends that he, he knows from his uh, um, uh, well time before. Uh, because you, you couldn't also move like this to Germany. You need an official invitation right. from a German side. Exactly. You need you need all the paperwork and that was done by the people from here so right by his friends and right. people that he knows and uh, well it's just like and after also 10 12 years my dad was just like okay i had enough of that let's change my work and let's do some some it stuff he, he hadn't any idea about that but it was just like that's just sounds interesting let's do it <laughs> you know <laughs> so after the hotel yeah <laughs> he said ah oh. Enough yeah, of this. Enough of this. I mean, we've been working like that for 12 years. Let's change it. And oh, let's do something about IT. And I like apples. So, so and he was he was like self-employed and doing IT uh, tasks for hotels because you know how hotel hotel works. And 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 then he just stepped in into this IT IT area. And then he started to do something like that. So that was quite quite interesting. Yeah. And when you were um, so you were working when when your parents had had this hotel you were working w with them in the hotel right yes so so you were helping out with your brother and uh but then when your father switched to it <laughs> yeah. uh they had to fire you or were you still uh... <laughs> how did that happen yeah, what yeah. happened Actually, actually, well, well, okay, fired. No, <laughs> actually, this was the, the time as I moved away to, to, to my study. So I started to study mm. economics in like 300 kilometers away. Right. And like, and, but that was no problem. So I, I just moved away and my brother was just like, okay, let's just start another job. Who cares? <laughs> you know, is your brother, and, is your brother older or younger? He's younger. He's ah, younger. right. Okay. Yeah. So he was still at home when you moved away yeah. from first studies, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. For, for another for another three re, three years, and then he moved away to Austria, um, also for studying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, but that was it was just like like it was. That is something that also is kind of my character. So okay, accept a few things that mm -hmm. something changes and do something out of that. You know. Are there things? Yeah, can you can you kind of if you reflect on that? Um, you know, the, 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 your character, the the way you've developed, and you know the person that you are now. If you think back, uh, you know, growing up yeah. in Poland, doing, you know, moving to Germany, you know, you, you know, the way your father is actually, you know, kind of uh, managing all that. What, what are the things that you kind of recognize yourself? Like, yeah, I, I took that with me, or that has had a big influence on my development. Well, well, there are a few things. The first thing is um, just work, just do it. You know, 
there's no no bad work or no 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 stupid work or no work that uh, that you are just like it's not on your status whatever so it's, right. it's whatever has that's, to be done has that, to be done that's the hotel right that's where you know yeah. tour, tour let's need to be cleaned you know yeah right I mean, yeah it has it has to be it has to be done so mm -hmm. uh, if it has to be done just do it right and if you can't do it on your own or alone just integrate people into that and do it as a team you know and that is that is something that really influenced me where I said, uh, if there is a big, something big to do, it's not about my work, it's about the work of the whole team. So I have to motivate people, I have to keep on track, and, and, and my, my thing is, if I will not manage that alone, so the team has to do it, so I have to keep the team, well, motivated, and see if that works, how can we manage that at first. That really influenced me, as I've been self-employed, so I've been um, self-employed for four years, having an own digital agency. So I was the first guy who stepped in there and was the last guy who left the building. So, um, you know, just to see, so people not feeling like, oh, he's the boss or he's whatever, and I'm just working on that, but always keeping that together uh, as a team. That really influenced me within this time. Right, mm -hmm. and also uh, deal with the unexpected because there are so many things going wrong uh, while while doing such things like also leading a hotel or maybe something happens like Corona right now whatever. Uh, I said okay, uh, it happens, and it's not nothing that breaks you down, but it's something that you have to work with. So there are no 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 kind of of course they are my kind of mistakes but but you know deal with it and learn out of that and and manage that so that is what influenced me a lot all right and okay so you moved uh, because you 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 were you're starting uh, at a school and you started studying economics right why because <laughs> <laughs> well, well, the, that, <laughs> that sounded weird no that sounded like why would anyone? No, it's like, that, that's me. That's my psyche. But so, okay. I, I guess if you come from a background, of, you know, working in a hotel and you and I think with, with your father kind of achieved, I think that's, it kind of makes sense. But, uh, yeah. but why was your, what, what, what was your interest in economics and, and, yeah. uh, and, and how, and, and how did you choose this, this, this school? Because it's quite far away. Right? Yeah, it must have been other schools closer to your your yeah. parents. Yeah, a, a, a few points about that. At first, I was really um, I, I was always brand driven, so I was really really kind of always interested how brand worked. At this at this time, there's a brand that is always in my mind, and I really managed that to work together with them. That is Burton Snowboards. Um, so I started snowboarding. That was the only brand there was Burton. Um, so I, I, I was writing the, the first board and they really always did everything right. So they, they were really a brand of a heart. So, and I was so influenced by that. I said, okay, how can a company do so many things right? So what is happening there? What, how can they do that? Right. Always been a, being like, um, within, with, within the snowboard area, always the, the, the brand number one. Right. Um, so that was one thing where I said, okay, if we talk about uh, this, how this brand developed and also other brands, Red Bull was another example, uh, as we grow up near Austria and Red Bull was forbidden in Germany. So what we did, we drove over to Austria, bought a, a, a lot of packs of Red Bull, went back to Germany and sold that, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> because that was, that was really a kind of so attractive brand. I said, how did how do they do that? So I started to, to, to think about um, what do I have to learn to know how brand works? And that was the topic at this point that was in the year 2000. No, it's 1999 or 2000. Where I said, okay, what about marketing? How do you market products and services to, to, to create this attractivity? So that is why I started to, to uh, actually study economics. And at this so, point, so, I said... Uh, sorry, before you go on. Yeah. No. Two two things I want to know more about. First of all, <laughs> I, I hear you talk about brands and still I'm thinking, where does economics, because in my mind, why don't you then go, you can take a totally different direction. You don't have to go study economics when you're interested in brands. You can become yeah. a designer. 
for instance, or a marketeer or yeah. whatever. But yeah. that's one thing I want to think about, uh, talk about. But the other thing is, um, well, two things. One is, so Red Bull was illegal in Germany. I didn't yeah. know that. Um, you go to Austria, you buy lots of cans of Red Bull, and then you sell it in Germany. That's I. That's what you said, right? <laughs> yeah, like like to to friends and. Um, and at some point, I was really influenced by uh, advertising and uh, advertisements, TV advertisements, because I, I have never seen something like that before. So in Poland, there was almost no advert uh, advertisements. Wow, that's and such an amazing like psychological experiment. So you totally. know, here's this guy; he's never never been exposed yeah. to these kind of these lies before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Totally, and then, I was just like, boom. Yeah. <laughs> They should have researched you. They should have, you know, like observed you, like to see yeah. how you're, how that would have, because that's interesting. Because we are, and I, I grew up with that, you know, yeah. all the time, and it has influenced me, like it is influencing everyone. But because you came from like this isol isolated, but I mean isolated from this kind of thing, all yeah. the way into this into this world of like you know, products and advertisement and all that stuff. So can you, yeah. can you, yeah, can you talk a little bit about what, 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 how that connects in your, in your mind and, and, and to, to your interest in brands and, and, uh, and what it did yeah. to you? Well, actually, I, I just thought there, are, there, are, there were also so many advertisements, right, all around me. So I've been really bombarded with that. At, but still, they are just a few brands they are really kept in mind, right? Mm -hmm. Where I said, they, how did they do that? So they are still... I don't know if, if that exists or not, uh, Kellogg's Frosties, right? Where just, I still have the song in my ears, you know? There's really? something that, yeah, t totally. Like, what was the you know, song? Um, 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 so it's the German song. So, Lass ihn raus, den Tiger, zeig ihnen, dass du es kannst. Den Kellogg's Frosties schmecken so, die wecken den Tiger in dir und dir. <laughs> it's, it's, it's in there, you know? Oh, and awesome. there. Yeah, they are just a few, 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 um, well, such songs, such advertisements that are in my mind, and it really okay. influenced me in pushing my parents, but also me, to buy those products. Right. And that is, uh, so there was a kind of differentiation where I said, no, I want to have this product, although I have so many choice, right? And that is something that, where I said, oh, I want to know how that works. Mm -hmm. I mean, how to, in, it, how to, yeah, you said all those lies, how to influence people. Well, it's propaganda, pushing. right? Yeah, it, a, absolutely, I mean, absolutely. I'm, yeah, I know what I'm talking about, you know. So, yeah. <laughs> so um, that was really something that, that was quite interesting for me. And on the other side, how does it fit to that, what the brand or the, what the company stands for? So mm -hmm. is it kind of mm -hmm. authentic? That is what I recognize with mm -hmm. Burton Snowboards, mm -hmm. where I said they always kept the promise. So if they are promising something, they are providing the proof for that, right? Mm -hmm. And then at some, during my study and really taking a deeper look uh, behind those promises um, um, uh, on advertising, I just started to think about, okay, but that's not authentic. I mean, they are telling you this, uh, with this product, with they can do, uh, I don't know, they, they can make you so beautiful, but at the end of the day, well, it's just a body milk, you know, come on. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. and, and that is what was really exciting for me to, at first, the point of differentiation, how do products and brands differentiate from others? How do they pushing people? And also, which people are they, are they pushing to buy their products? Um, and on the other side, so what's behind that? Is it a really authentic and and trustful brand or company, or is it just well, you well know, marketing? So I can again. I mean, this might not be you know exactly right, but I can imagine that you know these two two kind of almost opposite things happen to you when you come from uh, from Poland in the situation that it was in at the time because you came from a somewhat isolated world uh, where there was a regime um a lot of propaganda yeah makes you you know made you believe in stuff that maybe when you move to germany you're like wait a minute so 
two things might happen. One is this being at awe with all these products and these brands and these advertisements. But at the same time, you have an, an experience that, you know, you, you might be, you're being sold certain things that were not really true. Yeah. So you might be very sensitive. I, I imagine more sensitive than most of us to also what's behind this yeah. agenda. Yeah, questioning, questioning what is happening there, yeah. right? Not only believing in that, but also, but there's something that always like, um, yeah, it's always in my mind, just not taking things for granted, but also questioning it. So what's behind it? So if I start something new, I always try to find out what's behind that. Is that right? Is that, uh, you know, is this something that have to be discussed? Is this something that have to be, where we have to take care of and so on and so on. But on the other side, I'm still like, okay, let's do it. <laughs> you know, so that's something I, I, I love to try things out, but I want to know the, the background yeah. behind it. Right? And, and I think you, what you also took with you from Poland, at least if I, 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 I'm just trying to connect things, right? So yeah. is, I think what you took with you as well, this, you described very briefly, you described how in Poland there was a community of people taking care of each other. And, yeah. I, and I, somehow I'm feeling that, you know, that is something, because I, if I listen to you and the way you, you talk about your, your team and, uh, you know, in, in creating a company and, a, uh, and teamwork, um, is that is that something that you? I mean, it's not just because it's also probably your character, and it's also because of you know your experience working in a hotel and and uh, needing everyone and just you know you know doing the work. But I, I also feel that is, there might be a connection between sort of this having this experience, being part of this community, whereas in Germany everybody is very uh, you know indi individualistic. Um, and not so much, you know, you don't, if you live in a city in Germany, you don't even know your neighbors, for instance, right? It depends yes, a little bit yes, on where yes. you live, obviously, but in cities. Yeah. Is that, is there, is that, is, is that something you kind of think about? Is that something you're, you're aware of? Is that, or is that just, is that just not uh, something explicit? I think that influenced me definitely because um, uh, if we think about what I am, what I am, well, thinking about right now uh, about talking about leadership within companies, uh, where our main concept is human centricity, which means taking care of humans first. Mm -hmm. um, that is something that really influenced me, right? So I said, this community, this power of a team, this power of taking care of each other, uh, and pushing people to 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 more creativity and kind of feeling free, but also having the security. There is someone who will help me and who will, who who I can co-work with. Um, I think, yeah, that that really influenced me, and also what influenced me was the lack of that. Here in Germany, so it was quite hard, for example, for me to find friends at some point, right? Because they were just like very distanced, and, and, and that was totally different in Poland. So everybody was talking to everybody, and there was always like chat here, chat there. Oh, what are you doing here and there and there? Okay, let's spend some time together. Okay, um, and that was something different here in Germany, right? I just said people are kind of kind of distanced. They are they are very individual, taking care at first uh, of their own and their, their their nearest area and it's much much harder to get in touch deeply get in touch with other people uh, as right. it was in poland but still that's something which uh, also today happens in poland if you get there they are all, all, all almost all open-hearted they're just like okay let's chat let's let's right. you know um and that is something that yeah definitely influenced me yeah yeah how do you cope as a teenager because you know, if if it's hard to get you know to, to, to have friends and uh, how, how did you uh, manage? Well, this was, well, this was, this was f the first year or the first two years was quite hard to find a way how to integrate into the totally totally new system, which I didn't know. For example, what was important that the school way of being is like what you wear and how you you you, 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 you how you're looking. Right? right. So we are just like I didn't care about my clothes before that. I was just wearing what was there, right? And at some point, I just recognized, so oh, people people don't like me because I don't wear the right things or whatever. So whoa, what is happening here? So I had like just the first two years was it quite hard for me to find for me a way how to 
being integrated into that. And if you take care of what happened in Poland, where the integration was existing, so there was no question if people were integrated or not. They've been just integrated. And what happened in Germany and how, how important this integration for me was. Uh, so I have to find my own strategies and my own way of um, how to get into, into the, the, the groups and how to get people that they recognize who am I, who I am and how, well, who, how, how do I behave just to find friends and, and kind of areas so I can deal with people, right? So that was uh, okay. hard. And actually it was, one thing was my, my very open-minded way to deal with people. And on the other side, of course, I had to find strategies like wearing the right clothes, doing the right sports, you know, <laughs> using, using the, the right language and so on. Uh -huh. So that was, so, right. So that is why I started, for example, with snowboarding, not only because of that, because I also, uh, I was interested into new things. I just like, Oh, there's, there are no two boards, but there's one board. So uh, how, how, how can you do that? But at I, some I point, still don't know. I still, yeah, don't know, so. <laughs> it works. It works at some point. <laughs> I'm not leaving my two boards. I'm yeah. Very safe with my two. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, so at, at, at some point I just didn't recognize, Oh, people think that's cool if you snowboard and they're just like, well, let's just try it out. You know, um, we just started to recognize. So what is cool? What do people like and what do not like? Mm. And at some point for me to know the, the, the grade mm. of how far will I just maybe influence or change myself or my behavior just to, so people, other people like me and where is my own personality where I say, no, not, I will not do that, right? right? Yeah. And I had to find that out at a very early stage, so with 13, 14, 15 years. Yeah, right? important age. I mean, that's Definitely. an age where you start developing your, you know, your own identity and you're questioning everything. And like my, yeah. I, my, I, my daughter, she's 14. And, uh, you know, that's just, it's, <laughs> it, the, it's this age of, realization that like exactly what you were saying like everybody kind of sees me and has an opinion about me and oh but how do i then respond to that and what do i do to be part of something and but how far do i go do i because you know there's there's you know she's 14 and there's friends of her drinking and, and smoking and and yeah. uh, you know so there, there's all these which as a parent i'm like oh god yeah but 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 still it's it, it is it is stage where you are also you have to find your own way your own path and so for you that's sort of a um you know it's been probably really also a very interesting lesson or at least an industry period where you must have learned a lot about you know how to integrate and how not and what is yeah. cool and because yeah. you came from you know both you know a teenager and that is just what you do as a teenager yeah. But also, you came from a world where it was nothing like that. There were no, you know, you didn't have to wear the Nikes or, you know, and have the right shirts and have the right, yeah. there, there was no such you, thing. You, you, you didn't even know what Nike is. You yeah, know? Right, that, exactly. that, was, that, was, that was the topic. And I just like, no, here, here's the solution. I just like, okay, it's a shoe. Whoa. <laughs> you know? Whoa. It's not just a shoe, <laughs> yeah, Definitely not. not I know that. I know that right now, but at this point, it was just like it's language. Oh, it's language. Absolutely. It's, yeah. it's it's expression. It's personality, individuality, and that is so something what that it, I think. So, what was the if you look at yourself now in that time, and 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 so you develop your kind of your teenager personality, and you choose in your brand, you went snowboarding, yeah. and uh, what, what, how would you describe yourself as, or, or I mean, um, what kind of person or personality did you kind of kind of become <laughs> poor is it like the cool kid was it like the you know the cool snowboarding kid with the uh you know is, is, is it was it like uh i don't know yeah. i have no yeah. i don't have the right words to describe yeah, yeah partly yes um definitely which really influenced me but uh, not a for, punker or a new waver yeah, or uh I, well the fun fact was i was trying out almost everything so i also <laughs> start start to dj the djing as i was uh, i was ah, 16 exactly DJing, yeah. snowboarding. Yeah. yeah, you know, so just really try trying out cool things. So because I mean, looking back at that, this integration and and have the feeling that people like me. Uh, mm -hmm. To be very honest, was very important for of me. That, 
that change that change at some point where I find my own well self confidence at some point where I say well I don't I don't care uh, that much about that but I tried a lot of cool things out right so at some point after being DJ and snowboarding it was, uh, it was just like okay what about music which music do you listen to at some point there was the skate punk from Sweden because uh, every snowboarder was listening to that um, so at some point I got long hair and different colors, you know, so, oh, um, yeah. but not, not the area where I said I've been like uh, kind of extreme. So not, the, mm-hmm. not those, those extreme things, but okay. trying things out to yep. see how people react on act of that. Well, and you're not afraid. Yeah. You could have disconnected. You could have just stayed in your room basically. Yeah. And say, no, I'm not going to try. So you yeah. do. So this part of your personality is again just going to try. Yeah. Just gonna... let, let, let's just do it. So, so, sounds sounds yeah. interesting. Let's do it. Yeah, let's go do it. Like, <laughs> what what color hair? All right, fine. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, okay. Oh, it looks different. Oh, who cares? You know. Who cares? There's, yeah. There's there's one fun fact about me as a leader. There was there was a huge cartoon of different personalities of a leader, and everybody who was was taking a look on this picture was they, they found exactly one for me. You know, I am the guy who's standing in front of the others and just like, you know, guys, and then looking left. Oh, a new shiny thing. Let's grab that. You know, <laughs> <laughs> let's go there. Robert, yeah, let's go there. we are here, Robert. No, there's yeah. Like, uh, yeah but... Come on, follow. Come on, come on, come with me. You know, <laughs> but yeah, that is that is what what describes my person, personality uh, most. Yeah. Fantastic. All right. So in the story, we were we were going with you to your school of economics, going yeah. into marketing. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, how, how was school? Was it okay? You loved school? You liked school? You, you, was it a nice? Was it a good experience? I loved the school before I started to study. And um, as I was starting to study, it was... I loved the school, be- I, I loved the school before that. That was, that was cool. That was okay. That, my okay. school was amazing. And going to, to a university was right. just like, okay, what is happening here? And I had to learn so many things where I said, I'm not needing that. Never, never, ever again. So why do I have to learn that? There was so many, so many um, structured things where I said, no, it's wrong. Uh, if you take a look on, on uh, one uh, basics of economics, where we started to, to, to assume, let's assume the market is free, all the communication is there, everybody knows everything about their competitors and the products, and let's assume that and that and that, uh, the answer is four. And I was like, no, if I assume everything is different, you know, and that was something that I, where I just started my personality questioning everything. And I said, but that's not right. Yeah, but, but the professor was just like, yeah, but we have to, to find a result. He said, yeah, a result for what? Okay. I, I mean, right. it, you know, there were so many things where I just recognized, okay, I have to go through that mm-hmm. for, the first, for the first two years mm-hmm. to really start um, studying marketing. So mm-hmm. there was a kind of basic knowledge that you just get uh, about economics for the first uh, two years. And that was something where I just say, okay, let's go through that. I mean, it's, it's not that interesting. So I took a few, few, few things with me. But I said, okay, this is how it works. Let's do it. And then talking about the last two years, that was really, really interesting, really concentrating of the topic of, of marketing and branding, also compared with the topic of economics, where I just recognized, okay, profit, <laughs> profit is the king, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. so uh, at the end of the day, so influenced by the 80s and 90s, uh, uh, well, knowledge from 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 the from the states from america mm-hmm. and i just like well but it's not all you know so it was quite quite interesting for me to compare that what can you do on a branding marketing level so how to market products and services and that is on the on one side of course to, to create a good product for the company but is that all oh, is this the end of everything Right, and then what I really hated was the topic about resources. So uh, managing resources, I just like, yeah. But if you take a look at what companies, what we learn about companies are, uh, if, you, if you have the maximum profit in mind, you don't care about the resources. You just you just optimize them. That was what we learned really in our economic study. 
optimizing resources. And mm-hmm. I just like, and what about taking care of resources? Is that something and, you were thinking about at that time? Well, how old were you when you were? Um, as I've been, yeah, 24. Okay, so that's that's pretty uh, clever. Yeah, because be I was to, just... Uh, well, I was questioning everything, and at first, what I hated, and I was uh, that is what, what, what my what, what this topic we're talking about before were influencing me this community, the stopping of taking mm-hmm. care of people and of each other. Right. So the first topic that appeared in my mind was as we were talking about human resources, and I just like what, <laughs> just like yeah, we have to optimize that, and it's just like whoa, that's yeah. totally totally different of how I see yeah. people and working yeah. and co-working together. Yeah, you what? have like, uh, there's coal, there's oil, there's grain, there's sand, there's people. Yeah. There's, you know, like, wait, I, wait, 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 yeah. wait. <laughs> uh, you have just opt- to optimize that. I don't yeah. care about energy. Don't care about fossil oil, whatever. It's here. And I'm just like, yeah, but I, I, I've read something like that, that it's, it's not, it's not, uh, well, uh, infinite. It's uh, limited. I mean, I don't know if I'm the only one that I heard about that, but, you know, uh, what I said, but what I really get mad, got mad was the topic about, well, hu- HR, human resources, as right. optimizing them also in the topic of maximizing profit and taking, what they said, <laughs> take the best out of it. And it's like, oh, really? Squeezing people, you know? <laughs> Whoa. So, yeah. Well, then, then at some at some point I finished the study, which was okay. I was also writing my diploma thesis about viral marketing, so that was the first ah. top, uh, the first touch I had with digital uh, marketing or, mm-hmm. or digitalization at all. Mm-hmm. And then I started to work for a friend of mine who who had a small company with forty five people, and I said, "Okay, Robert, you study economics. Can you introduce that into my company? Because, well, we grow up like from." three people to almost 40 and it's all chaotic <laughs> and that is why i had one year time to really exercise and also experience how real economics in real life in a small company what it is right mm-hmm. what you have to take care of and still people were in the middle of whatever you were doing right so we've introduced like uh, packaging lists we've introduced production lists so we've introduced some structures and organizational things and that was always the topic of if people are well happy about that if they're taking care of that or not and if they are not if, if they are not taking care of that if they say i don't care about that just let me do my, my work you will see that at the end of the day it didn't work right so at the end of the day, it was it's, it's, it's always been about motivating people, go the steps with you if you're changing something, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, yeah. What, what I should also mention is uh, that I started to work as a working student um, at a company called Brand Trust here in Nuremberg, uh, which are well-known brand consultants. Mm-hmm. So I had the possibility to learn a, a lot about how brands, uh, well, what is important for brands, what are brand rules, what is vision, mission, what is a brand statement, uh, how to develop that. Um, so I always had this brand topic in mind. Right. Um, so that um, helped me a lot to also to understand what are the mechanics at this time. It was around about 2004, 2005. Um, uh, what, what were the whole mechanics about brand, branding, and brand rules, and so on. So right. that is something that I took with me for the whole time until today. So I'm very thankful also for this time. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, okay, so because uh, in a way, they're, they're the, um, you started being interested in brands. Actually, pretty cool because the, the, that is still you know, it's, it's the stuff that you're dealing with. You're Absolutely. Still, right. So that, which is amazing. It's nothing like my, uh, my career because it's been all over the place. I never knew what I wanted. So okay. that's, that's, I'm quite jealous. <laughs> this is amazing. Um, but so what happened after? So you, 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 so you joined that company for a year. Yeah. Okay. And, and then what, what happened? And then at some point I said, just like, okay, let's got self-employed. <laughs> so but this is where you started your own company. Yeah. 
Right. <laughs> there was there was a, um, a kind of friend Why? of a there was a friend of a friend, and uh, he had just a very small company doing a lot for Adidas at this point. So like image videos and and presentations and so on and so on. And at some point, and we got somehow in touch. Uh, and at some point, he was just like, "Okay, I'm a really good video cutter, and I have like." two or three freelancers here doing that, but I don't have any idea about economics and I don't have any idea about marketing. I don't have any idea how to sell those products to people. And I just like, um, well, okay, let's do it. Why not? <laughs> so we founded a company uh, here in Germany and uh, I just really just took care of first of this economic stuff, like, uh, you know, taking care of, of money, how, how to get our money, how do we get uh, those, those uh, paid for everything. Um, how do you start to sell those products? So that was my first touch with acquisition. Mm. Um, so within Adidas, but also outside of Adidas, where I started to went to trade shows, getting in touch with, with different people, you know, saying, hey, listen, guys, we are a digital agency. And a digital, what is digital, you know? <laughs> um, and trying to sell that. And that is a network that I've created and I'm still, still taking care of until now. For, with, with around about right now 900 people they are still in touch somehow during the year because somehow it was fascinating for me to talk to so many different people with different needs and wants and different personalities right so we started to to do this business very successful also on uh, so we were doing we, we we were creating the whole sell in communication for adidas so that is what they are selling or, or all the presentations videos and so on and so on for the new product mm -hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, well, at some point it was getting too big and too much also for me. And yeah, that was the, the year of 2008 and 2009 where I just broke down totally. All right. This is your burnout. Uh, you right. talked about. So yeah. well, how do you, how do you know that you have a burnout? <laughs> when, do you, well, when do you say, yes, I, I think. Yeah. I, I mean, take a look. Backwards, uh, I know exactly where it started and what the what the signs uh, were. But within this time, it was just always like, yeah, okay, you're not feeling well. You know, you, you just forget things. That is the first thing where, where where we just started. You know, and you're feeling stressed and busy. You you, you will not calm down. That is where, where it started. And it's just like, oh, come on, come on, it's, you're gonna manage that. Easy, easy, come on. So. Um, at some point, I uh, couldn't sleep anymore, so I just slept for two or three hours and woke up with a really pressure on my breast. It just felt like a big stone on my on my breast. So that is the point where I started to do sports, running until today. Uh, but I mean, running like for three or four hours within in the middle of the night. You know, oh, really? Just, yeah, just to get my mind free, just to get the, the day structured, and so on and so on, and. And everybody was just like taking a look on me also within the company and saying, oh, Robert, you, doesn't, you, you just don't look good. I mean, mm. you know, something's wrong. And it's like, no, no, everything's fine. Just a little bit more sleep, uh, maybe some holiday and so on and so on. But at some point that was uh, like beginning of 2009, I think, um, I started really to, to, to um, well, forgot a lot of things. So I had a call, very important call, for example, with one of my of my uh, product managers at Adidas. So that was very important. We were called for one hour, and I just like, I just hang up and just like recognize, oh, I whoa, I can't remember anything out of that. I, I can't remember what we are, we are speaking about. But hey, I, I took notes. Everything's cool. So taking a look on those notes, it was just nothing. They were just yeah. scribbling, well, right? And at some point, I just recognized it's about my health. So I've got kind of, well, drifting away and really falling down for a few seconds. Uh, I just recognized, okay, at that was the point where I said, okay, something's wrong. Something's totally wrong. And at this point, I just recognized it's far, far, far enough to say I have to quit that because I, 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 I cannot manage that. So I have to take a break uh, for a long time. Uh, that was almost half a year um, where I really said, okay, whoa, it's, something's wrong with me, right? Really right. taking, having also therapists who, who, who helped me within that. Um, and uh, yeah, that is uh, what happened. And at some point I feel 
or I felt healthy. <laughs> and then I just um, decided to, to found another digital agency. <laughs> oh, you're like, why not? <laughs> that went really well. Let's, let's do that again. Let's go, yeah. let's go and do, do the same thing all over. Yeah. But uh, I, I, so, so, okay. So you, but you, you going to stop working. Uh, you took a break for six months. Yeah. Um, what were those six months like? I mean, were you, were you, because you must have been, were you frustrated? Did you feel ill? Did you, were you, I mean, because yeah. at, at that point you might not know how long that's going to take, right? Yeah, definitely. It was just like, of course, I had something in my way. I said, okay, uh, at some at some point, you have to start to work again because mm. you know, I mean, you have to to pay your bills and and so on and so right. on. But the first three weeks, I've been just like away in the middle of of of, of mountains um, where where nobody just like uh, I, I've been like contacted no one. I just like I want to have really calm down and see what is happening with me what is happening in my mind how did it well influence me what happened and so on so the first three almost four weeks i've been like really cutting everything off i said people i'm away for 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 i don't know how long but at least three or four weeks so i have to find to myself again and see what happened within myself um and after those four weeks i just went back home and said okay um what should i do so that is the point where i started where i was searching for therapists mm. um and say okay let's see what happened within my mind right and which was okay but um in my experience um i felt like i'm healthy but it still influenced me for many many years mm. Right, so how 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 I how I was acting, I just recognized for a long time. I, for example, wasn't able to to feel any deep feelings for a long time, like deep love and deep um, joy, whatever. Also, mm -hmm. deep fear, something like fear, wasn't in my mind until uh, until my son uh, was born. Right, so that's really? the first. Yeah, that was the first time I really felt a deep love, really deep love. And a deep fear about, whoa, how are you going to manage that, you know? Uh -huh. <laughs> and, um, well, yeah, that has influenced me for, for a long time, for a very long time. So, so still getting step by step, taking care of myself. So how do I feel? Do I feel like, you know, can I manage things? Um, so that was really step by step getting back to life. And at some point I was recognized, okay, Robert, you have to start to work somehow, right? Mm -hmm. And um, so the easiest way for me at this point was, okay, let's find, you know what you can do. You know uh, that this digital topic is a topic for a lot of companies. You have many contacts there. Let's do it almost the same, but different. So not, rec not, not concentrating on one customer, but providing very quick and fast digital solutions for a lot of possible customers. So working on projects for one to three weeks, deliver that. And well, let's go for another project. So, so why is that a solution to uh, to that specific problem of um, you know your health and uh, and not getting? I mean, not trying not to get a burnout again. I mean, why? Because I, I think I understand, but why do you? Why did you feel that was a solution to have not with just one com client, but have many clients. Yeah, actually, it was a kind of dependency as we were working the first company. So at some point, they were just pushing more and more uh, projects and products into that. They were just like, it was just a dependency that wasn't healthy, right? So right. they could also say, you know, you, we are spending so and so much money on you and that's 95% of your turnover and so on. So they had the possibility to, well, deal with you in a special way. They didn't do that, but it was just a feeling that I have, like right. having this one dependency and uh, knowing that just one bad thing could lead to the fact that the customer would just say, oh no, I will not do any business with right. you anymore. Yeah. Uh, that really stressed me at the end of the day, right? Yeah, that's the danger of having one big client. Absolutely. 
absolutely yeah, yeah. and that i experienced that on my own and my body and my mind so yeah <laughs> you know? totally but but it's also i mean it's counterintuitive in a way if you haven't had that experience that because it's also like amazing and it's such a because you have this great relationship and 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 you know all the, the work just comes in uh but, but if you if you haven't had that experience of you know what if that client all of a sudden says well you know we like to try another agency or we'd like to because you know or or you know the, the the most important client within the company you know leave <laughs> get another job in another company or something the relationship is yeah. broken yeah. so that feeling of that might happen in the back of your mind even if it doesn't and even if they're wonderful and they treat you really well the, you know, the fear back of your mind is is something and, and i think everyone who's been working in agencies who have their own agencies probably had that kind of moment where you had maybe one or maybe two or three big clients and they could just they had they get so much power even if they don't you know treat you bad it's just yeah. not a healthy situation to be in right especially it's always in your mind you know it's always always something that's really yeah. Just in, it's it's just there, you know. Yeah. So and you have good advice. Good advice for people who are, uh, you know, wanting to start their own agency. Yeah. You know, uh, be aware of the fact that you know diversity is king. In this absolutely. Thing, right. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So so what happened? So you you started again. You yeah. kind of you kind of knew more about yourself, and because you are this person that says, you know, just go do it. It has to be done. Yeah. Let's go and do it. And, you know, but there's a moment where your your buddy and your mind said, "Well, n- no, no, yeah, <laughs> right, and just just slightly, just slightly, you know, no, and then you're off, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that was that that was an experience that really just like um, I took with me, and I started to listen at some point, and it took me another two or three or almost four years to listen to my what my body and my mind is trying to tell me so ready to listen to that how far can you go isn't that uh, isn't that much too far what you're doing right now um at at some point also not taking care of what people think about yourself but being the self-confident having the self-confidence and to know what 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 your profession is and what you can do or even not right yeah. um but that took a long process so we've been very successful on the on the on the, as, a, as an agency that worked quite well but still my personality without having the possibility to f- have those deep feelings on right. any area i was just like like a i don't know maybe like a cyborg <laughs> well but working quite well so always it, be nice to people and also selling products, developing new things and so on and so on. But at some point I also recognized, uh, okay, something's still wrong. So it's something is missing and, and I don't like it like it is. Hmm. Right. So, uh, at this point, uh, my wife and, and, uh, me, that was just like, we've, we've never had the topic about kids, but at some point we said, we don't want to want to have any kids. And at some point she said, Oh, I want to have kids right now. And I was just like, well, okay, right now, or can I just, you know, <laughs> can I think well, about it? <laughs> yeah, can I just, you know, and there was one topic, uh, if we, if we, if, if I thought about, well, being a, a, a father or being, being responsible for, for children, um, there's, I don't know where it comes from, but it was a topic. If I want to do it like that, I want to have time for my kids or for, for children, and I don't want to be self-employed. I don't want because I know it. I, I I will always have the pressure of, you know, do business. If you don't not doing this like that, if you're not doing this right now, but maybe right. just postpone that and so on and so on. So that was the next decision where I said, okay, I have to uh, get out of this this agency, um, and thinking about being employed. <laughs> so again. Yeah. And that is where where um, well again, I, but 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 if I if I heard you right, the um, previous time you were employed was for the one year. Yeah, that was it, right? Yeah, yeah. It's just so you just, just experienced one year. That's not really. That's not. No, that's that, like. It's not a really good job. 
definitely it's not it's not employed for for what other people would call it yeah. right because maybe it when you're like, in a hotel in a hotel maybe maybe more as within the within this year but right. that was something i said okay let's do it and yeah. then uh, i i had the connection to the owner of brand trust they had another agency and he said okay robert for 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 uh, for 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 a different time for maybe one year one and a half year two years i can offer you the possibility to transform this company into more digital way because they were a very classical agency and um well just like okay let's do it let's try it out uh so i went in there and they are doing a really amazing and a really good work but at some point i just recognized it's the culture and also the management that i i don't like i i that's something that i now something's missing again right so at some day i was driving i was passing by here our offices and i see our green green logo i have to say right now our and i just like recognize oh that's also quite interesting company as a digital agency with 80 people that nobody knows out there so uh well the, the name was known in nuremberg but you didn't hear anything and also also in germany but you didn't hear anything about uh, since many years so they are quite very quiet but if you talk about good quality work our name was always there so <clears throat> i was just passing here by and i was just like okay quite interesting let's see <clears throat> so i met the ceo here and he was just like well i like your personality i like what how you think and what your mindset is and i was <laughs> I was uh, applying for a job as project management because I said, okay, let's do it. Let's just, let's just, let's just try it out uh, or senior project management at this moment. And he said, no, I don't see you as a project manager, but I see you as a kind of business developer for us as an agency or as a company. And I was just like, okay, whatever that is, right? <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Fine, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that is where 2000, beginning of 2015, I went here into this company. And uh, what, where everything that I've experienced so far helped me a lot within here because um, I had to kind of transform this company, but I've been like self employed, which helped me so mm -hmm. far because I just met my own decisions and just did it like before. But I, what I didn't recognize that there are a lot of, people they have also take care of while deciding those things, right? So that's something that I had to learn, like the CEO, other guys from the management board. Uh, right. So mm -hmm. that was a kind of where, where they said, okay, Robert, yeah, uh, whoa, amazing what, what is happening there, but how was the way in there? Why didn't you tell us that something like this and this and this uh, will happen? And that was <laughs> quite, yeah. yeah. I, I, I have mean, to tell you? Yeah. So, <laughs> Come on, it's my area. So, you know. yeah. <laughs> um, so that was that was a quite interesting experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, for me, also learning again yeah. and again and again and again. But it well it went quite well. So we are right now really on the right track. So I, I love this job here, really. And I love the people here, and I love that what we are doing. And at some point, I really got the peace of mind <laughs> that I was kind of missing for so many years which, which i didn't even recognize that i'm just at the right place with the right job and with the right mindset right right yeah and um so where is the uh, economist uh, uh because i know you're you you have a big interest in uh, you know th that that topic yeah and so where where is that uh that that kind of part of you uh, well, I mean, within the company, um, it is the topic of, uh, uh, within our company, it is the topic of the, 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 the existing transformation. So where, where are we going to lead to, you know, how, do, how can we earn our money? And I'm not talking, uh, I'm not talking about making money, but earning mm -hmm. money. That's mm -hmm. totally different mindset. What's, if you say, what's the difference? Well, if you just make money, you just make it. You don't care about how it just comes to you. You don't care exactly. about resources, whatever. Mm -hmm. If you earn money, you have to earn it somehow. So you have to you have to push everything forward so people give it. They love it to give it to you at the end of the day. Let's say it like that, right? A totally yeah. different way of 
of getting money. Because when you were in your 20s and you were studying economics and you were in your, in your school, you were saying like, what are human resources? What, what Humans are no yeah. resources. And we have to, so, so this is, so this is one of the things that you are kind of integrating into, you know, what you're doing yeah. and your business. Yeah. There, you know, so are there other things like that from that, that kind of philosophy that you have that you yeah. say we have to do things very differently. Yeah, there are so many things. Um, uh, also talking about being responsible for things, right? Like taking responsibility as a as as a as a person, but also as a team, but also as a company. At the end of the day, also as a brand. So take responsible for what you're doing. Take take responsibility. Sorry, for what you're doing. Right? What is happening out there? What what you are impacting? What you are influencing? Right? Um, that is something that I believe so many companies they just don't, don't have it in mind. Right? Still influence. If you take a look on who is sitting on those management uh, seats at the end of the day, still influence within the 80s and 90s, optimizing resources. Whereas that, uh, well, it's it's in my opinion, it's wrong. And let's see if that works. If they are still other companies or companies who are just really doing this transformation and always keeping in mind in my opinion in the, within the next 20 30 years the differentiation will be not about the best quality the best price and the highest value from delivering products whatever uh, i believe it, it is uh, being sustainable and being responsible for what you're doing i believe that there will be some shift uh, and there still is for, for, for some companies where people will be aware of what, what is happening out there. What do we do with all those resources? Um, uh, and that is wrong. So, um, and to teach people uh, or companies and to show them how important that is taking care of something like that, which will call, uh, as I mentioned, human centricity. It's not about, uh, only about employees, but also taking responsibility for the whole thing that I am influencing as a company. Um, that is something that drives me. That is something that really influences me. And that is something that I recognize for a lot of companies, they start to listen to that. Mm -hmm. uh, but they are just interested in, okay, what is it? And what's, what, what is it about if we're talking about human centricity, right? right. Um, where I think there are a few companies who are on track about that, but still a lot of companies who are just like, don't taking care of that, but I think that is the where the movement will go. Uh, we were talking the last time about the wave, and I think that's one of the of mm -hmm. the waves where it's where where, where it's leading to, um, and that is something that really really inspires me on the other side. So I mean, and then you're talking about your, your clients, right? So yeah. the companies that that you work with uh, that that you show sort of another way. Uh, yeah. of doing things, uh, making them aware of, 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 of you know, a, another way of doing things. Yeah. But also, but you personally, as a leader, as yeah. someone within your own organization and, the, and, the, and the, 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 the people around you. So how, how does that translate to your own kind of way of leading mm -hmm. and, and doing things? Oh, on, on so many ways. If, it, if, it, if you take a look, I'm, I'm um, well, managing director, per, per, as my, my title is managing director, but if you ask people in here, they will not, they will not say he's a managing director. He's just a co-working guy. He's a, he's a colleague. He's, he's something you can work with. You can, you can talk and discuss with, who's also taking care of what people, other people are telling me and saying, oh yeah, you're right. It was my fault. I'm wrong with that. You're totally right. Let's do it like that. Um, there's also about motivating people and creating spaces for people where they can develop. They can um, feel kind of safety also doing mistakes. Uh, and I am the guy who's standing there and say, yeah, it's my responsibility also to take responsibility for your mistakes because we've done that together, right? You shouldn't do the same mistake for twice or three times, you know. You should learn uh, out of that. Uh, but that is something where I believe leaders have to create the space for people where they can develop and taking having security well i can try things out right because without trying out you cannot develop something new it, okay it doesn't so, it doesn't work can you tell me a little bit more about that safe space so how yeah. how do you how do you create the safe space 
Oh, it's 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 on the different levels, especially talking about at first talking talking uh, with people. What would you like to do in the future? So, what what is your vision within this company? Where would you like to go? And they're just they are telling me about this and this and this. Okay, how can we how can we achieve that? What personality? How how do you learn things? Just like I just like do it by yourself, or do you need some lectures? Um, do you need projects for that? And uh, let's just try it out. Let's do it and. The space is created more in mind and not a physical space, right? Because they always know if, if there is something, they can always ask me, talk together with me, mm-hmm. always keep me updated. And I just say, okay, that's a, I, I, I have all the information and I can stand up there and say, yeah, that's the right way. And if it's the wrong way, well, let's learn out of that, right? So providing the security where people can try out new things on this level, and we are integrating that right now within our company in an agile process, developing uh, products and innovations for, for ourselves. So mm-hmm. I was trying things out and connecting with people within the company and say, okay, how can we create process out of that where, where we can integrate all employees into small kind of spaces where they can create ideas and being really crazy and mad about that. Mm-hmm. And let's see if we can do something out of that. It's like a typical agile process. Sure. Okay. Um, but it sounds like uh, it, 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 there's a need for for trust, right? So absolutely. because if I would be working with you and I wouldn't really trust you because, yeah. you know, there's there's enough companies that tell their employees that they have to be creative and, uh, you know, and have an entrepreneurial spirit and try things out and, you know, and then... In the end, they cannot make mistakes, and the and there's a f- culture of fear. But it's based on they trust; they have to trust you. So, which is, I think, so for a lot of people who are either uh, who are in a leadership position or, or, or aspire to be a leadership position, or I think that's how do because that's that also makes you very vulnerable. I, I, I assume mm-hmm. right? because how do you how do you deal with yeah. how do you how do you create that that trust with people? actually you have to you have to prove that actually how you're dealing with people if you mm. tell something that you have to provide it that's 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 the most important right. thing that is at the end of the day it's all about trust that is why people buy products from brands from companies that right. is why people deal with each other you have to create trust so if you promise something keep that promise right so if the i brands so the brands you love what you said that those are the brands that that keep their promises so yes. that so in a way that that can it's the same as you as a leader you know you, you just you know you do what you say and 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 yeah. you keep your promise absolutely but you have to prove it so at right? first so, you have to prove it until people create this trust and start to to deal with you right if i say hey listen guys we are good uh, we are going it like this and this and this and this then you stand behind it and if there are any problems and and our ceo says hey listen robert but that's a crap and so on and so on where i'm standing there and saying no it's not right and if 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 that is i am taking the responsibility for that and not people not people beside me right so uh, which uh, people just recognize uh, okay i can trust this person because you know he's exactly. standing or she's yeah. standing in front of me and keeping the promise and that is a kind of relationship that you develop together with your people right you need a relationship with your colleagues employees uh, also as a leader you need a relationship to, to 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 the people and not seeing that as a it's a producing resource part or whatever right you yeah. need a real relation to those people you you, you need to know who are they um, uh, you know what their concerns are and what is important for them, um, and that is what 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 you have to also deal with. Mm-hmm. And when you started, um, you know, doing this, because uh, w- when you started working in your your current company, w- did they already have a culture like that? Was that or is something people were used to? Um. Partly, yes, definitely, because yeah, okay. I, I, yeah, I don't think that I would start. And there's also something in mind uh, for, for me to like, okay, how to do it with a company where there is this old thinking structure, culture, whatever. Right, right. Um, I think I, well, I would just like 
give up after after, <laughs> after after some time because if there is nothing they can build on right mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it's the first thing that that you have to create is a kind of something that you can build on and, yeah. and if there is there is nothing you can recognize okay well where should i start mm -hmm. um that's quite difficult of course it might also work and it works also in the other companies but it's a huge huge amount of work right, right? so so what would you say if you if you if you um you know if 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 you would give a advice to someone who's kind of just starting on this this journey and uh because we i think yeah. i think we all well it's i'm pretty sure people listening to this podcast all know that uh you need to create that safe space for 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 people in order to be creative and to be innovative and to be agile and to be you know the whole thing yeah um and and also to provide quality to to your customers and your clients of whatever industry you're in if the people working in your company are you know working um i, I want to say be happy are happy but maybe that's a big too big word for people to kind of <laughs> conceive but i i still think that if they're happy if they're if there's a trust relationship if they if they there's a their safe space you know that they will deliver better quality of course <laughs> because it's common sense it is just nothing more than common sense yeah so if you if you if you you know with all your experience in you know having your own company and and working in the company uh, that you're working in now, where 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 would where should people start? What 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 is a, what is a what, what, do, what should they do? I think there's there's one important thing that I personally recognized, and uh, it's not about me. It's uh, so you know a friend of mine said hey robert take your ego out right it's not about you and i at some point recognized okay i i cannot do my job without the people who are co-working together with me so if at some point if i, I would give the advice it's not about you it's about the team and people who are who are providing that what you need as a leader and what 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 what, what um what makes you and the company successful Right. right. If you will not have those people behind you, well, it's always a fight. Right. It's always really, really hard. But imagine what will happen if you, if those people are co-working together with you, uh, with the same target, with the same aim in mind, knowing you are standing behind them and you are supporting them, so they supporting you too. Uh, well, what an amazing power you will create right now. So it's not about your success, but the success of the team and the people behind you then you're successful right so right. take take the ego out do it <laughs> okay that's that's good advice well, what about the future what what about the future what you know you you have your philosophy your your yeah. your uh, you, uh, you know you see you know you see things differently than uh, than most people and especially uh, you know from an uh, economic point of view mm -hmm. um what what about the future for yourself uh but also uh, you know you you talk we you know we, we talked about this wave. Um, yeah. What what do you see? Well, actually, for, maybe I, uh, it's easier for me to talking about myself. Sorry for that. I know I have to take my ego out, but you know. <laughs> 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 but uh, actually, actually, I know. Uh, well, I found my my business family here. Uh, let's say it like that. I feel really really well here, and I can push things forward, um, which is really really cool. So I'm gonna stay here for for a long time, hopefully. Um, always keeping the striving force of humans at the end of the day, uh, right? Just just really keep that in mind. Um, I also wrote an article, uh, fortunately in German, about that. That that's the only res let's call it resource uh, because it is one, but on a totally different way. It's the only resource that never ends. So human creativity and human power, right? Not in the way how we are dealing with that today, but in the future, right? So if we're talking about all the top uh, topics of um, being future oriented and being safe for the future, it's all about creativity of people of human creativity it's not about finger uh, figures and numbers quarterly numbers and optimizing that and that because all the other resources in my opinion are limited at some point right so you have to 
take care of how you're dealing with those resources. But at the end of the day, create the power of human creativity and they, you can motivate them. And if you start to do that, then we are talking about creating innovations who are also sustainable for the future, right? So that is something that I'd love to work on that. And you see that it's pushing. That's the, my wave, let's say like that, you know. And that is where I just recognize that companies start to think about it and also to implement that, um, like Patagonia did. That's, that's just, just an amazing example. But also as a burden, as a snowboarding company, they announced yesterday, well, all our, our whole value chain is now sustainable and economical friendly. We've worked for that for many years, but now we can announce. Uh, we can do that, right? We see... So um, at the end of the day, it's only possible with the right people and not with any other resources, right? People who are changing things where you create space, uh, they can develop and use their own creativity to develop new products, new topics, and so on and so on. I believe the topic of sustainability and not only eco-friendly, but really being sustainable and responsible, um, that's the big wave. For me, right? So people have to move somehow for taking respons uh, responsibility for what they are doing, what they are doing within their teams, what they are doing as a company, as a brand, um, within the topic of being sustainable in the long run, not only eco-friendly, uh, but also really sustainable, providing products and services that people will keep in mind and love at the end of the day, uh, but also teaching consumers out there um, what is possible for the future, right? Uh, there are so many startups and brands who are t doing things totally different at all those big concerns and big companies are doing um, because they have the possibility, right? So I think that's the future. So that's the way where, where we are heading right now. And it has at the end of the day, uh, to, to, to keep it in, in, in our topic, at the end of the day, uh, it has to do a lot of economics. So how do we use economics, what we've learned so far, uh, how we, well, create eco, yeah, eco-friendly economics, um, dealing with that. So what will happen in the future? So it's not only about, no, it's never about optimizing in the future, but it's about how to take responsibility for our, our, all our resources, for, for, for uh, also for the people, how we can, can we integrate those people, within all the topic of, at the end of the day, also being successful as a company. But because at the end of the day, of course, it's all about earning money for a company. Mm -hmm. But how do you do that in the future? Awesome. Thank you. Good, good place to, uh, to end on this very positive, uh, inspirational note. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your story. Um, that's uh, something to, uh, yeah, I love that connection between, you know, all the things that you went through f from a, a child to a teenager, you know, and um, with, your, uh, with your passion and, uh, and even your burnout. Um, uh, it, I think it, because all these moments in life teach us, teach us so many things. Right, and if you, yeah. if, it, if you allow yourself to learn from these moments, right, then then they they are not wasted, and they are not they they become very important, and, and they shape you, and they end up. But it's very good to be able to reflect on that. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for your time, also for your question. It was a pleasure. Really, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. And um, well, thanks a lot for that. <laughs>